Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to have a Derek Brunson fighter showcase. And it's about time that I get this Derek Brunson video out, especially after his last impressive performance against uh, Darren Till, in which he submitted Darren Till in a very dominant fight. I think in the round that he did win the fight, and he looked a bit shaky when Darren started throwing, but we all know with Derek Brunson, that's a big weakness, is that his chin and recovery isn't the greatest. And I thought that, to be honest, I didn't think that Darren would end up winning that fight. Obviously, this blonde hair, Derek Ronson, is um, the next mythical fighter. And he's set to fight Jared Cannonier. Now, that's going to be an extremely interesting fight because Jared is one of my favourite fighters. I really, uh, really, really like him. I think he's a very strong middleweight. And I'm a big fan of leg kicks and he throws them beautifully. So, it'll be interesting to see how Brunson comes up against someone that has power in hands and, and his feet. Man, he's relatively, got relatively good takedown defence. So, that's an interesting fight. But getting into the gameplay here. It's a shame they haven't updated um, Derek Brunson's model to give him the blonde hair. So, yeah, that's that's inconvenient because obviously this is now the blonde hair Derek Brunson that's going on a tear. But if we get into this here, we're going to have a couple game plays. I think we're going to be coming up against the Robert Whitaker, the new Anderson Silva and Izzy. So we're coming up against the best fighters in the division. I had a lot of game plays to choose from, but I thought... Seeing as these were like the top three fighters in the division, it'd make most sense to upload the gameplay of me fighting the best fighters. And we're starting off with the best fighter in the middleweight division. Robert Whitaker on the game is just different level. So, yeah, you know what it's going to be like fighting Robert Whitaker just because how he can take the fight anywhere he wants. A very skilled wrestler. And he's uh, extremely, extremely well rounded. Beautiful stand up. So, it's going to be a hard fight. But quickly, while the gameplay is running through. Derek Brunson's got 91 punch speed, 93 punch power, and a very good stat in 98 takedown defense. So, if you are facing a wrestler in this division, for instance, say you're coming up against Hamzat Chemaev or you're coming up against the Yol Romero, the takedown defense is there, so you can look to sprawl and brawl if need be. But the, the main thing you want to do with Derek Brunson, of course, is wrestle, and he's got 95 takedowns, 92 top control, and 93 ground strikes. So, if you look into those stats, it shows you that when you are on the ground, you're going to want to favour the ground and pound and then opt to look for the submissions later on after you wear down your opponent because his submission stats aren't the greatest, especially compared to some of the other fighters in this division. But he can do a good job in a ground and pounding your opponent and you will see how I use him on the ground within the next gameplay clips and weaknesses. So, as you see there, I've just been dropped and the ego sort of getting the better of me here. I'm trying to stand with Robert Whitaker, which is never going to work. I did shoot for a takedown early on in the fight and my opponent done a great job of denying it. So that's been in the back of my mind. I don't just want to carelessly shoot. I'm trying to plan when to go for it. And here he is again hurting me. The only saving grace here really is that he's using some stamina. But if we look at Derek Brunson's weaknesses here, is that he's only got an eight, 89 cardio, which isn't the best. So for five round fights, you've got to be careful and selective with how you use him. And if your opponent's working the body, it's going to be a real big problem for you. In terms of blocking, he's got 88 blocking. And when you're in this division with guys that have so much power, such as Robert Whitaker, an 88 block isn't really ideal because they will tear through that block and it will start to get through. And once your block breaks, it's going to be very easy for your opponent to get you out of there. He's got an 87 footwork, which is why he feels a bit stiff when you use him. He's not the smoothest fighter to use. I mean, you're trying to move around, sway punches. We're using the head movement. He's, he sort of feels like a brick. And in terms of accuracy, he's got 88 accuracy, which again, when you look at some of the elite strikers in the division, the Israel Adesanya, the new Addison Silva, the Robert Whitakers, Kelvin Gaslin, Jared Cannonier, they're all going to have better stats in that department. But of course, that that is obvious. You know, you're using Derek Brunson, who is a wrestler. He's going to have the best stand-up. And obviously, stats do show that. However, he does have power in his hands, so if need be, you can stand. As you see, we get another knockdown here. However, you are going to look to incorporate your wrestling. That's that's the main thing you want to do. You don't want to keep this fight on the feet for too long, which is contrary to what I'm doing here. As you can see, I'm, I'm standing with my opponent right now. But that's purely just because of the fact that I feel like in this fight here, I have the ability to stand with my opponent. It is very contextual, it is subjective. You have to take each opponent as they come. Obviously, seeing the matchup on paper, you see Robert Whitaker, Derek Brunson. I'm going to have to look to take this fight to the ground from the get-go. Get but 
as the fights progressed, we're having more success on the feet. But like I said, it's extremely dangerous just to stand there with Rob. And as you can see, he gets the knockdown here. Goes on top to try and get the finish. We do a good job of swaying and getting out of that. And this really here was the, the big wake-up call for me. But Derek, Derek Brunson's obviously good off his back. We get the reversal here. And this is a pivotal moment in the fight because now I'm on top. I didn't even have to shoot for a takedown. As you can see, loads of damage done there. My opponent's going to try to get up. We deny that. Go back to stat guard. And as you can see, the ground and pound stats really showing here. Doing a lot of damage. Trying to break my opponent's block. And then we opt to go into half guard because I was thinking, alright, let's not get this fight back to the feet. Let's stay here and look to dominate. We look for the submission finish. And as I was saying, obviously, Derek Brunson doesn't have the best submissions on the game. Which is unfortunate because I feel like his submissions are very, have improved a lot in real life. Obviously, just got a submission victory over... Darren Till and just got into side control here and here's where I'm going to really look to dominate and control my opponent potentially get into the crucifix and like I said if you've ever watched any of my videos I always say that this is the most dominant position to be in and it's exactly where you want to be using Derek Brunson especially coming up against the Robert Whitaker and as you can see we're just controlling my opponent here and really really tiring him out and this is extremely good because we've got 44 seconds to work with. Unfortunately, submission wouldn't really be viable at this point here. And as you see, my opponent's really doing everything to get out. So I'm just denying a transition, front one elbow. Denying transition, front one elbow. I'm keeping very patient. As you see, does a good job in um, getting out of that. We're doing a lot of damage here, especially to my opponent's head. And that's key because obviously next round the fight's going to start on the feet. And if my opponent doesn't have good stamina and doesn't have good head health, it's harder for my opponent to recover when he's been hit. And this is exactly how you've got to utilise Brunson. When they are on the ground, you've got to look to really hurt them, uh, hurt your opponent, break that block, damage that head health, bruise them up. And that was a very big round. Obviously, my opponent did get the knockdown, but I think towards the end of the round, obviously, we got the better of it. On the judges' scorecards, I'm not too sure how that round would have looked. But we've got the fight back onto the ground now. And as you can see... Deny my opponent's transitions with ease. And get back into side control here. Unfortunately, didn't get the denier. But here comes the ground and pound. Really looking to get my opponent out there. But as you can see, I'm being calculated. I'm being selective. I don't want my opponent to catch my arm and reverse the position. Because Robert Whitaker on top is still dangerous. My opponent goes to get up here. Uses the cage. The cage walk up. Throw a knee there. Take my opponent's back. And we jump on top here. I was expecting my opponent to go down straight away, he didn't, and we lock in the submission attempt here. And this is a very strong submission, but my opponent, as you can see, is doing a very good job of getting out of it. And it's very evident that I'm not going to get this uh, submission finish here. And like I said, Derek Brunson doesn't have the best submission stats, especially when you look at some of the rest of the fighters in the divisions. So if you do want to dominate opponents and just uh, look for submissions predominantly, he might not be the best fighter for that. However, he can he can perform submissions once you wear down your opponent. Of course, we are fighting a Robert Whitaker who's got good submission defense. I accidentally got up there, but fortunately was able to jump straight back on. And we go straight into side control here, which of course, like I said, is an extremely uh, dominant position. And my opponent now is having a real, real hard time of um, getting up. We've done a very good job of uh, implementing a solid game plan, especially after round one didn't really go our, our way. Round two we got hurt, but towards the end of round um, two we've done a good job. And round three we've really shown uh, what we are capable of. So I go for the submission here because my opponent's stamina was low. And the only reason I went for this was primarily because my opponent's stamina was low. And I also knew that uh, if you looked at the clock there, I went for it around two minutes. So I knew that if I didn't get the submission finish, I'd have about a minute to work with of ground and pound to try and get my opponent out of there. So you've got to be very smart with how you how you time your submissions. Maybe that's a video I'll make in the near future of uh, how to time your submissions and when to go for them. Because I think that might be very helpful. And as you can see, we're coming up against the new Anderson Silva. The GOAT Anderson Silva, who's of course extremely, extremely good, as you'd expect him to be. And we know here that um, the stand-up battle is going to be extremely one-sided, obviously. Anderson Silva is going to be way better than uh, Derek Brunson when it comes to standing up. But on the ground, obviously, Anderson Silva's got slick submissions. But um, Brunson's got a good submission defense, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, as you can see, my opponent did try 
you know, go for that fake sort of glove touch and try a head kick me off the bat. And that's one thing I've noticed with these uh, Anderson Silva players, especially with the new Anderson Silva, is that people's fight style with him is extremely, extremely cheesy. They like to throw the knees, the elbows, and a fake glove touch here and there. But we, we start off this fight by getting my opponent to the ground early. And that's extremely crucial because with Anderson Silva, I don't want to be on the feet for too long. We're learning off of what happened in that Robert Whitaker fight, in which I took a lot of unnecessary damage. And the fight could have been, you know, stopped a lot sooner had my opponent had better success on the feet and with the ground pound. So we get Anderson on the ground here. And as you can see, this is going to be a very common theme that I'm just going to get into side control. I'm just going to throw elbows, going to posture up from half guard, stack guard. And I'm really going to look to wear my opponent out with ground and pound, break my opponent's block. And this is exactly how you've got to use Derek Brunson if you want to be successful. Because, like I said, you can stand with him, although it's a pretty dangerous game. If you're fighting another wrestler, say you're coming up against Hamzat Chemaev, you can look to stand. If you're looking, if you're coming up against Charles Sonnen, you can look to stand. But when you're coming up against the elite of the elite in the middleweight division, you're you're playing a very dangerous game if you are opting to stand up rather than take the fight to the ground because that is where you're going to have the most success. And as you can see in the gameplay so far, I'm doing a good job of controlling my opponent here. The only thing you've got to really be worried about with Anderson Silva is he, if he catches you in something tricky like the, the triangle from full guard. So you've got to look to keep your stamina high. We're doing a good job here of denying these transitions. And I'm being very selective with the ground the pound I throw because I don't want it to be easy for my opponent to get up and look to you know reverse the position. Because once we're on the feet, of course, my opponent's going to have the advantage. But being very selective taking my time and being patient that's the one thing you've got to be when you're using Derek Brunson you've got to be extremely extremely patient you don't want to rush into anything you just want to be calm pick your shots even on the ground like I said just be patient wait for your opponent to move and really wear out your opponent obviously these are three round fights I can use it up a bit more stamina like I said stamina is not Derek Brunson's strong suit so in order to sort of mitigate that I'm being selective with what I throw, but I'm really looking to drain my opponent's gas tank more than mine. Because, especially when you're coming into these five round fights, stamina is extremely, extremely important. It's extremely crucial. And once you start failing certain takedown attempts and your stamina starts draining, and you're fighting a Israel Adesanya, a Robert Whitaker, an Anderson Silva, which have good power, good speed, great combinations, they will start to light you up. So... That was a very successful round one, and coming into round two, of course, we're going to be looking to do more of the same. I don't want to give my opponent any sort of chance. As you can see, I expected that there. I'm surprised the hook didn't stun my opponent, but it is what it is. My opponent's throwing in that leg kick there, which we've got to be careful of because his leg health isn't the greatest. And leg kicks, although most people say they're not the most useful thing to use, I think they're extremely, extremely powerful. And as you can see, he was spamming me with elbows, so I give him a taunt there. I never really taunt in my videos. There's a, if you're a subscriber, you'll know that I don't really like taunting too much. But I feel like with the way this guy was fighting, it was uh, justified. But quickly, just to take a break from what's going on in the video, I just want to say a massive thank you to all my subscribers. I think I've reached 115 subscribers now, which for me is a massive milestone. I didn't expect to get here so quickly. It's nearly been a year of me uploading content, and I'm just really glad that you guys are enjoying it. So if you are enjoying the video today and you are new around here, please leave a like and subscribe. I post UFC content around once or twice a week. And if you have any content suggestion, please let me know in the comments below and I'll get around to recording that video. Um, the, there are some videos I'm working on at the moment. I've got an Alexander Volkanovsky showcase coming out. And also a Derek Lewis one, which is proving to be a very challenging. But like I said, if you request a video, I will work on it and uh, try get out to you as soon as possible but going back to the gameplay here you can see that I'm having great success on the ground really dominating my opponent going for this ground and pound here again being very patient my opponent's block starting to disappear and his head health's getting lower and lower so this is um this is exactly how you want the fight to be going we get into side control here about to land some elbows and wait and see if he moves we deny that transition and this is where my opponent I think decides that he's had enough that he doesn't want to see the fight through and you will get this a lot when you're wrestling of course um, people will just get annoyed they'll get 
angry they'll start making rash decisions and when things don't go their way of course they'll quit but that opponent there was very cheesy so I was very happy to get that fight over and done with I really wanted to drag out the process of breaking down my opponent there just to make it more annoying for him I don't like when people resort to cheesy tactics or you know the fake glove touches etc but now here we're coming up against Israel Adesanya the champion of the division extremely good fighter and I mean he's on the feet there's just no one quite like him he is a specialist he's in his own way cleared the way for specialists and striking especially people you know you don't see them come in as a specialist and do too well obviously there are notable exceptions but I'm talking about the vast majority of UFC fighters can't just specialize in one thing and be um, extremely good but is he is a very special breed of um, athlete we saw what he done to Derek in real life of course that wasn't the new mythical blonde hair Derek but I think if these two were to fight again you know maybe the fight will go on for a bit longer but I think Israel would still get the win fairly comfortably so right now as you can see I'm standing my opponent and the only reason I'm standing here is I'm trying to pick up on patterns of how he throws of course he's throwing a lot of spinning strikes which is something that I'm taking note of and right now I'm really waiting to see if my opponent's going to tire himself out before I shoot for a takedown because if these spinning attacks aren't doing the damage that he needs them to be doing then he's just wasting stamina so like I said it is very subjective you need to know how good your opponent is if I'm coming up against an extremely technical extremely patient Israel Adesanya I am going to look to take him down because he's going to have the stamina advantage over the course of the fight and if it's on the feet he's more likely or not going to win the fight but right now I'm just seeing what my opponent's doing obviously he got the stun off there but like I said I'm just being patient trying to pick up on little patterns and see if there's anything I can exploit in order to take my opponent down because I don't just like shooting for takedowns without having something in mind because that can get you into a lot of trouble and as you can see I'm working out the range now my opponent's starting to miss a lot of spinning attacks here and that's just going to ta tax my opponent's stamina and when you're using Derek Brunson who doesn't have the best stamina that's exactly what you want you want your opponent's stamina to be as low as possible and we get the stun back I tried to go for the head kick but it was out of range so that's not really ideal because that wastes my stamina and obviously we know that Derek Brunson's stamina isn't the best my opponent's doing a good job here of landing these knees and a lot of strikers will throw knees against wrestlers just so they can clip them on the way in it's a good way of deterring the take now and that's something I've noticed that my opponent's doing here which is sort of making me a bit sceptical uh, shooting in for these takedowns and with around 20 seconds left of round 1 I'm not going to shoot for anything because that's very predictable how many times have you fought a wrestler that hasn't gone for a takedown and in the last 20 seconds they shoot for one just so on the judges scorecards it will show they've got a takedown so rather than doing that I opted to just wait and um, take my opponent down in round 2 we didn't test my opponent's takedown defense, so I'm not sure how good it's going to be. I just know that my opponent's throwing a lot of knees, so I've got to be very careful of when I shoot. Maybe mix in some strikes before I shoot the takedown to sort of off-put my opponent. Because if I'm just standing there like this and I shoot, it's quite easy and predictable for my opponent to see. And as you can see there, I was swaying away from the first strike, and then for some reason I must have held the input and I swayed straight backwards at my opponent knocked me down there it was beautiful for my opponent there but a massive mistake for me and around here is the time I realized that look I, I really need to get this takedown soon hold him down there and just look to get a finish because he's piecing me up right now and with Brunson like I said because of his movement and uh, footwork he feels extremely extremely stiff so it's very hard to get out of these punches a good little exchange there um, obviously Derek does have the power we shoot for the takedown and we get it and this is this is big because right here is where I need to keep my opponent if I want to win the fight I know that if it goes to the feet now because of my head health and the recovery he's just going to keep lighting me up and eventually get the the win so this is pivotal I really need to keep my opponent here for as long as possible potentially the rest of this round uh, because coming into round three I would be needed a, a finish probably to win the fight my opponent ends up getting up here which like I said isn't ideal but we shoot for the takedown straight away which he wasn't expecting we turn it get straight into side control and here what a lot of people do and I've noticed is 
they throw twice to the body or to the head here to build up GA and then they instantly move and often or not it's instantly moved to the sprawl and I've noticed a lot of higher level players doing this I think right now at the time of recording this I might be in Division 18 but of course you'll fight in Division 25ers and whenever I get people into that position uh, and they're on the bottom they'll throw twice and move either way I'd really recommend not doing that because it's a pattern I've picked up on so I'm sure some of the elite players have uh, picked up on it as well and it's just very easy to deny because I know you're going to move as soon as you throw those two strikes so yeah try not to be doing that because that's what made it easy for me to uh, deny my opponent's transitions there we get the top mount does a good job of getting me back into half guard and right here I've got about a minute to work with so if I want a submission I'm going to have to look to go for it now because whenever I go for submissions they normally take about 50 to 60 seconds um, to submit my opponent depending on how good their submission defense is as you can see good bit of ground to pound there done a lot of damage to my opponent's head he used the stamina advantage to then get me into his full guard and from here I'm going to posture up and really just look to get my opponent out of it I know his block's not in a good position as you can see he's waiting to get up and he does so here and with 20 seconds left I'm going to look to throw something just to get a knockdown but yeah that's the video for today please um, like comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the next video will be an Alexander Volkanovsky showcase um, and I'll see you then thank you